Jared, good to talk to you, my man. Hope all is well. Hope the fam is good. Um, first off, what has it been like navigating uh, through quarantine and then preparing for uh, the resumption of NBA play? Well, first, I'm going to start off. Hope everybody is well and everybody's families are well. That's what I want to say first. But uh, it's, been, it's been different. It's a one-of-a-kind time. Uh, it's different navigating for everybody. You know, we're all, I don't know if we're all in New York, but we're all in different circumstances. You know, we're spoiled. We get food delivered. But it's been different. We've, practice has been different. Everything has been different. I think you're up, Greg, right? Yeah, I am. I, I'm sorry, I lost the picture for a second. Can you hear me now? Jarrett, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, you're, you're tight with Spencer. And, uh, and I'm wondering, um, have, how much contact have you had with him since he's fallen ill? And what do you know about his condition? and how he's getting through this whole situation. You know, when I checked up on him, I just sent him a text just to check on him, see if he's good. You know, I know he's, I don't know how rough of a time he's going through right now, but he is facing some symptoms. So I know if that was me, I'd wanna, I wanna be left to rest. So I never, I didn't push too hard on anything. Just wanted to check on him. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, when, you, when you look back, uh, over the, the situation that led up to uh, the start of the NBA plan, you know, what was your impression of the talks among the players about whether or not to go, whether it was a good idea or whether it would detract from uh, the social protest movements that are going on right now? Uh, you know, from when I was here, it's been a little bit of both. You know, at one time we want to keep the focus on the protests and the movements, but at the same time, we want to have an outlet for people that are facing a lot of hardship, you know? So it's a little bit of back and forth about which one do you want more of? And, and finally for me, uh, just in terms of your level of concern uh, going down there, uh, how worried are you uh, about their ability to, to keep the players truly safe in a bubble? You know, I think for everybody, including myself, there's a little bit of worry. Uh, we're all going into an unknown. But at the end of the day, I have no doubt that the two powerhouses, Disney and the NBA, are coming up with the best solution for us. You know, obviously, there's a little doubt in my mind. We're all human, but I'm confident in them. Thanks a lot, Jarrett, and stay well. No problem. You too. Hey, Jared, can you hear me? It's Brian Lewis. Yep. Can you hear me? <laughs> hey. um, I guess this piggybacks a little bit on what Greg was asking, but I, first off, hopefully you and your family are well. I know Texas is going up a little bit, so I hopefully everybody's good there. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, going into the playoffs or going into this restart, I mean, you've got personally a pretty big – opportunity. I mean, unquestioned starter, you guys are going to be playing some pretty vital, important games. I'm curious, how did you personally weigh whatever, whatever personal dangers that you're going to be going into versus uh, how big of an opportunity this is for your career? And was there ever any point in your conversations, either with your family or with your agent, with your teammates, that you were reticent about going down there and how how tough a decision was it for you personally? Personally, it wasn't super tough decision. It was, like I was talking to Greg, we were saying to Greg, it's Disney and the NBA. I, I believe they're going to make the best situation that they can. They're going to try to keep us as healthy as possible. You know, they're 
it, well, I did question myself whether it's worth risking my health. But at the end of the day, I think the weighing option is better for me to go. I'm not too concerned about the health portion. Thank you. Hello? Jared? Yeah, I can hear you, Otis. Hey, man. Hope, hope all, all is well with you and your family and everything. Uh, we were hearing from Dame Lillard the other day, and he said that he's not 100% confident that the players, forget the protocol that's in place, but that the players would be able to adhere to it, to, to, to take this as serious as, as it needs to be. How concerned are you about that? Uh, you know, uh, how many players? It's going to be 300 10 players or something like that i think take nba players out of it that's a lot of people to make sure you have complete control and complete uh guidelines over so and then you add the nba aspect where you put a bunch of grown men in this situation you know we have our needs we have our our wants and as you know how we are <laughs> I, I agree that there's going to be some level of hardship like dame said jared how's it going man how's it going good good, good. uh real quick uh, how long are you going to grow your hair and would you ever cornrow it like harris did no no, no. I'm, a, I'm a like harris <laughs> <laughs> got you um shifting them back to basketball um obviously in and out of the rotation starter first then coming off the bench and then going back and forth and then DeAndre's announced the start and now DeAndre's not going. Uh, is there, do you, would you say that you have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder to kind of prove that you're a starter in this league and kind of piggyback off of Brian's question about the opportunity? What are you seeking to prove uh, with this NBA restart that's going on? Uh, you know, I think I have a little, not a little, but I've made a staple for myself as what I can do in the NBA. Uh, you know, DeAndre's out and as we heard, I'm wishing him the best. I want him to get healthy and recover well. And, you know, for me, I've been in this position before in the playoffs, you sure. know, rookie year, I was the main big playing. And then sure. the and then last year when Ed got hurt, I had the sure. load. And then this year, you know, this happened. So right. I just need to come out and prove that I'm able to play at this level again. Sure. And um, following up on that, how have you kind of been spending this time? Uh, obviously, the training facilities were closed for, for quite some time. So what were you doing to stay busy? And how did you kind of find your normalcy in, in that crazy time in the world right now? Right. Well, you know, our, when they shut down, the season was getting crazy for the Nets. You know, a lot of things were right. going that way. So when it shut down, it was kind of good to take a step back and just recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after a while, you start itching to get a sweat going. You know, the next yeah. you're lucky enough to be able to have a bike and some weights in our apartment. So I was able to be able to stay in shape during that. And then once voluntary workouts started coming back, I was in the gym Monday through Friday. Gotcha. Thank you, man. Um, hey, Jared. I hope everything is well with you and your family. With you know, since the, the league has started allowing players to opt out, obviously, you know, the front court has been where you guys have seen, you know, the opt outs, especially with Wilson and DeAndre. Do you feel any, you know, kind of piggybacking off of Christian's question, do you feel any added pressure not to try and, you know, just with, with injury concerns and, and getting sick, do you feel any added pressure just to not uh, try to avoid those and, and stay in the bubble as best you can just because there's, there's not a lot behind you in terms of depth? Also, Nick being out, I, I forgot to include him in that. Yeah, you know, there is some pressure. I don't want to say, I say, yeah, I'm like the last big standing, as bad as that sounds. So it is come some pressure for me to be able to stay healthy and be able to help the team succeed. And, and then also piggyback off the second question: Is there uh, from Christian? Is there any? You know, you talked about how you stayed in shape during the pandemic. Is there anything you tried to do for fun or, or keep busy just with your mind? I know you're big into the tech stuff, so. How did you kind of keep your mind occupied outside of basketball stuff? Uh, just, you know, me and my computers, computer science, anything that <laughs> be able to take my mind off the events that were happening. Thanks, man. No problem. 
Hi, Jennifer Williams with Fox 5 New York. Quick question for you. A lot has been said about how mentally tough people are going to have to be going through this experience, and especially considering the NBA is so progressive with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, like, how have you, like, even thought about how you and your teammates are going to stay mentally sane through this entire process? Uh, you know, we haven't been able to talk about it as a team. I know the NBA has some programs set in place, especially now with the coronavirus and this Black Lives Matter movement has been going on. So they're definitely going to have some uh, of those two things. And just being in Orlando, being on the bubble, you know, that's just – three things that are pretty pressing issues. I wouldn't say an issue though, being in Orlando, not being an issue, but just three things that are just on their minds. So really the NBA has it, you know, uh, we have our team mental health professionals and really I think basketball is going to be our outlet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Jared, Ian Bagley from SNY. Thanks for doing this, man. I'm glad you and your family are safe. Um, just in terms of the timeline here, uh, I guess you guys have about a month roughly to get back into game shape. Uh, do you feel like that's going to be enough time, you know, based on what you've been doing the past few months? Or how do you feel that's going to work itself out? Uh, you know, I don't think we're going to be where we would be if the season – didn't uh, postpone, you know, that couple of that month or however so long, it definitely took a toll on all of us. I know with the individual workouts, they are definitely having us do some extra running. Uh, they're kind of manipulating the program so that we can, that we can be, uh, be healthy and be ready. They're looking at other sports, seeing where the injuries are coming from. So they're trying to be progressive in those areas. Thank you. Jared, Bob Windrum from uh, Nets Daily. Uh, tell me what it was like as things really began to get bad in Brooklyn. Um, did you stay in Brooklyn the entire time or did you go home? And what were some of your considerations as, as you made those decisions and as you would hear the sirens, hear the reports of increasing number of infections, death, et cetera. Can you take me through the early days and, and your decision-making? Well, early days, was when we were in San Francisco, that's when we heard it. And I was like, oh, no, we're going to play without fans. That's the end of the world, you know? And then things started to really get bad when we went back to New York. I, I decided to stay. Like you said, the streets were empties, and there were sirens everywhere. And... I decided to stick it out in New York. I thought it'd be better because the Nets were doing a great job taking care of us. And and how many of the, how many roughly were there who stayed in New York? About half, I was told. Is that correct? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's half. You know, I don't know the specific numbers. I couldn't keep track with everybody, but I think you're about right. Thank you. What's up, Jared? It's Matt with the book here. Glad to hear you're doing well, man. Um, I know you've been keeping busy with your puzzling and your soldering, but um, on a more serious note, I was just wondering how you, you felt and how you dealt with this string of, of police killings and how that affected you. And, and were you out there in, in the streets um, or, or outside Barclays and, and supporting the movement um, kind of quietly? You know, it's a... I wouldn't say it's a sad time. It's a, it's definitely sad to see it happening. It's been a sad time for many of years. It's just even worse now that people are catching it on camera. You know, it's becoming a more of a thing because more people are seeing what's going on, but it's been happening for hundreds of years. But I did, I was able to go on a March for Juneteenth, you know, it's it's a tough time because coronavirus, you know, is do I want to stay healthy for my team or do I want to go out and risk my health and not only bring it back to my team? So I haven't been as out as much as I wanted to, but I was able to participate. What was that March like? And, and was that here in, in BK? Yeah, it was here in BK. Uh, we went across the, the, the Brooklyn Bridge. 
uh, it was an empowering march. You know, it was great to see that not only uh, was there African Americans and Black people, but it was predominantly white. You know, it was great to see that we had a lot of allies on our side. Was it difficult to um, kind of blend in with the crowd, given that you're a little taller than most of the people walking across the Brooklyn Bridge? You know, it, it wasn't at all. I only got like maybe one or two just people pointing at me, you know, saying, <laughs> thank you for being out here with us. Nice, man. Thanks. Stay safe. Stay strong. No problem. Thank you. Jared, uh, Christian again, um, just given the, the number of people who have either been injured on the team or tested positive or just chose not to go, uh, what's your sense of what this team can accomplish in the Orlando bubble? Uh, I think we can accomplish as much as we want. You know, obviously we don't have you know, damn near half of our team, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think we can – go out there and do what Brooklyn has been known to do over the years when we've been faced with adversity. Go out there, play our hardest, and play with a bunch of grit. Hey, guys, uh, last question now. Hey, Jared, it's Tom. It's great to see you. Hey, Tom. Um, you said you've been doing some individual workouts for a while. So, so how long have you been doing that? And now that the team, more guys are in the building, you know, what do workouts look for you look like for you guys as a group right now? Right. So since the voluntary workout started, I was in here since day one. You know, we had coaches here, you know, they, it was one on one uh, for that time. So it was kind of slow. It was, as you know, it'd be hard to work out with only one coach. And now that we're back, it's a coach and a helper and then myself. So that's made it a lot more, a lot more e easy to be able to do more complicated things. Uh, you know, we have rotations, you know, players come in and out. So it's been different not being able to play against, you know, like another player. That's the only thing I can say.